Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and respond to a comment that I've gotten by Mohammed Goose a couple weeks ago, and I'll make a video dedicated on that. The video is going to cover a proper way to conduct decline curve analysis, because there's so many that's out there, and what's typically adopted by a company. So stay tuned for the content. Before we get to it, please be sure to like this video, Subscribe so you can get content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Remember, when you click on that subscribe button, hit the notification bell because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Every Friday is a professional development topic and every Sunday is a technical review, such as this video. Well, let's continue with the content. Hello everyone, so today I'm going to talk about the different decline curve analysis methods. This came from Mohamed Goose as a request on investigating all sorts of decline curve analysis methods and which one should we choose. Here are the types that I'm going to cover today. Obviously there's a lot more, but here are the ones that I'm going to cover today, which are ARPS, modified ARPS, Duong and modified Duong, stretch exponential, multi-segment, power law, and logistic growth. And note that I'm not going to go into the weeds of each one of them. There are many papers that cover all of these. However, I will give you a brief overview of each of these types. The first one is ARPS, most applied in the industry. You've probably seen the general formula, which is why you're probably asking the question of which one should I use. And I wanted to give a reminder of what the B factors represent on what type of decline curve that you're looking at when you're utilizing ARPS. The next you have are modified ARPS. It's most applied to industry with reserves estimation. So you're using the same formula as used in ARPS with an ending tail of an exponential decline after a certain terminal decline percentage is reached. There are still some industry debates today and everyone uses a terminal decline differently. So what's the proper terminal decline used for forecasting reserves? And then does that terminal decline matter? The next I'll talk about is Duong and modified Duong. It's developed specifically for unconventional reservoirs with very low permeability, such as the Bakken. And the shape of the curve is suited for wells that exhibit long periods of transient flow. Here's the general formula of the Duong method, where you have your Q over Q max, and then you have a series of relations here with your time and your M and your A factors. An estimate of A and M can be derived from an intercept on the y-axis and the slope, respectively. I'll, like I said, I'm not going to go into detail of how you can utilize each decline curve analysis method. I'm only going to talk briefly about when these are used. And a plot of Q is made and a slope of the line of best fit indicate a rate at day one. The intercept is at Q infinity or Q at later time, which is the flow rate at time infinity. The modified Duong is the line of best fit on Q versus T may not regress to the origin, or in other words, Q, Q not, or Q infinity is not equal zero. Then a change of flow to boundary dominated flow can be modeled using a hyperbolic decline of 5%. So that's the modified Duong method. Stretch exponential, it's the variation of traditional ARPs, but it's better suited to unconventional reservoir due to its bounded nature. Here's the general formula for the stretch exponential. And I would like to point out that you would need a series of stretched exponential equations needed to fit an entire well. That's been from my experience of fitting a stretch exponential decline. Next, I'll talk about is the multi-segment. You're generating a three-segment ARPS decline that allows each segment to capture distinct flow regimes, including transient flow, boundary-dominated flow, and exponential decline. And this method is well suited for unconventional reservoirs that exhibit multiple flow regimes. The next I'll talk about is power law. It's defined as a loss ratio, and its derivatives are originally presented by Johnson and Bolins and ARPS. Here's the general formula of the power law, where your Q hat is your rate intercept. Then you have a decline constant at infinite time. Then you have your time exponent, and then you have your decline constant. And the last I'll talk about is logistic growth. It's based on the underlying principles of population growth, which stipulates that growth is possible up to a certain size. 
So here's the general formula of logistic growth, where K is your maximum carrying capacity, and the rest of your parameters that you're looking at, such as N, A, and B, they're parameters that you're used to match your declining data. The question I ended up getting from my comments is, which one should I use? This has been a question that even I, as a reservoir engineer, have been trying to answer, and which one can honor the data the most? Most of these, I will let you know, are empirical, is, they're all empirical fits. So you have to honor what is definitely happening down hole in terms of flow regime changes. That's what I'm going to mention. However, most SEC reserves estimations require the use of ARPS or modified hyperbolic for reporting. And the one thing that I'll mention is you need to evaluate the type of reservoir you're investigating, as most of these are used for unconventionals, which is why you have a series of different decline curve analyses that are out there. And a lot of the data that was used to match to create all these types of decline curve analysis come from tight shale gas or from gas reservoirs. An example that I'll give is what I'll mention before, that if you observe any flow regime changes, you may want to use multi-segment. That's an example. But the last piece of advice that I want to give in answering this question is you want to make sure what methodology you use is repeatable. And that's everything that I wanted to show you all today. Please be sure to reach out to my social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on this video so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Remember, it's your comments that have made me a better YouTuber and maybe better at delivering content related to oil and gas and professional development, and I hope to see you in the next video.